Oh, are okay. you? Oh, Hi, everyone. So let me introduce Jaya. So we have, yeah, we, we, yeah, we had planned to have Jaya's uh, demo in March. I think March, yeah, March in, in person. Uh, we couldn't do it. I'm very happy that we are able to make it online. Uh, I think we can make, make it even more interesting because we are able to see the Jaya's work very closely now than in Finland. Uh, I know Jaya from, in 2014, she was our jet for the fall fest. I think many of you were not there. So I think only Jank and I was there, I think, at that time. Uh, so we, I, uh, like, I was amazed with her, the way she was, uh, the, the, the judging and also the critiquing for every work. So she had a lot of patience to critique on everybody's work. So it was, like, I enjoyed uh, talking to Jaya at that time. Uh, and Jaya has been, is a native of California. Uh, she lives in Sacramento. And she's, yeah, like as uh, Nina said, yeah, so she's a famous artist. And uh, so she started showing in 2003 and she was the youngest artist to show at, at the Stanford uh, art, art Gallery uh, when she was 24. And her work has uh, been shown in, uh, in many, uh, published in many articles. So new that you can see the more details in the, in the email I have sent. Uh, so mm -hmm. one, uh, most interesting one is the, uh, the Splash yeah. 11. And also her work is in the, in the Triton Museum. Uh, and also one more I saw. I'm going to make sure. Uh, one is in Triton Museum and there is another museum you mentioned. So where is it? I'm trying to oh, it's in effect. <laughs> yeah. So, so her work is in, uh, in, in the permanent collection uh, over there. Uh, so we, today, uh, uh, Jaya is going to show how to create an acrylic landscape with minimum colors. So this is going to be very interesting. So I, uh, in the last demos I had seen, I, I, I bought more colors after seeing the demo. I thought I'm missing so many colors to paint. But this is going to be very interesting painting for us to see how to make, create an awesome artwork uh, using minimum set of colors. So Jaya has only four colors on her uh, table now, and she's going to take us through how she creates awesome uh, landscape using these colors. Now over to you, Jaya. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Shiva. This was such a trip. So you guys, this is my very first ever in the history of Jaya live virtual demo. So, so um, thank you for your patience with my dealing with my studio and my technical difficulties. So this is a uh, very exciting experiment for me. Um, and let me know if you need me to adjust anything and I'll do the best that I can. So this demonstration is really near and dear to my heart because I am like the empress of limited color palette. You don't need um, every X, Y, and Z of color from, uh, you know, the art store. You can just be like totally. Um, and learning how to use limited colors essentially means that you are um, strengthening your color mixing muscle. I think I'm looking at the right camera. Is that me? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We see oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm looking at this. <laughs> um, and so, Color mixing is like a foundational skill. It's skeletal in any kind of art. And um, being able to effectively color mix means that you will achieve what you want with more ease. And as artists, that's kind of where we want to go unless, you know, you struggle your way through a painting and guess your mix. Because um, I swear no one here has ever run into that. <laughs> Um, so what I'm using today, I'm working on a, a sheet of canvas paper. This is it is a sort of like a faux canvas. It's a great way to practice and you know um, uh, just you know really pump uh, paintings out. It kind of mimics canvas, and I like working on it for this quick project. So this stuff is called canvas set. And I have my palette paper. I don't like to put a stay wet palette, even though I live in Sacramento and it's probably about like 80 degrees in my studio right now. Um, but this palette paper is really easy cleanup and you can really get down on it. I have 
my uh, four colors that I don't worry, I'm going to go into these in depth, but I mean, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, and Hansa yellow light. And this is just a really simple, uh, easy to pick up limited color palette. And by limited color palette, of course, you don't have to have these four colors, but essentially you have your colors and most likely a white. Um, and notice how I don't have black in my limited color palette. Hint, hint, hint. Um, of course, I got water for my acrylics. And in this little squeeze bottle, this is matte medium. This is a essentially a, a liquid acrylic acrylic that you can use glazing. And um, so this stuff I use like milk on cereal. This stuff is awesome. I if I put my money towards anything, it's going to be high quality acrylic paint and good brushes. But I like working with synthetic brushes. These. Let's see if I can go like Yes, because the, it's not, yeah. yeah. So the brand is Princeton, and this is their Umbria line brush. The reason why I love these brushes is because they have a little bit of a spring back. They have a little bit of a spring back, but they have a softness to the tips of their bristles. And this is what is going to give that feathered effect as well as the ability to really just get her down. So I absolutely love these guys. Um, I have three sizes here. I have a small number six. I also have a number 10. This is about half inch wide and then about an inch wide. And then this guy, which is my papa bear, this one's almost two inches. So I have these guys just kind of, you know, in my back pocket in case I need to grab a, um, a bigger brush. And let's see here, what else? Oh, also on my table, I have a rag for wiping excess paint. And I have a paper towel for um, getting rid of some extra water on my brush because you don't want to overwater your acrylic. So those are, that's really like what's in front of me. And um, you know, if you guys have any questions about something, just make sure to holler. And I think you'll kind of pick up that someone's trying to communicate with me. Yes. I'm absolutely not looking at the screen. <laughs> yeah, it's, we, I think we can ask, we'll ask questions as we go because I think you may not be able to see the chat. So if you have any questions in between, uh, we can, we'll ask as we go. Uh, so if yeah. you have any questions, you can ask. And not, also just continue with the painting. <laughs> so as we go, we can ask. So, um. Okay, good. And I also just noticed that there's a delay with my camera and um, the screen. So that'll be interesting. Okay. And so when I start a painting, I like to tone my canvas. So essentially I'm putting down all that I'm gonna work against. And um, I'm a Technicolor girl. I absolutely love like really, really bright colors. So I wanna show you how you can kind of achieve um, exciting colors as well as more subtle earthy colors with this color palette and I am the so PS like it's, I live in Sacramento and I don't know if you guys know how hot Sacramento is but essentially your paint dries as it's coming out of the tube so I'm squeezing out some quinacridone magenta, and the yellow light, and this is how I'm gonna start my piece. I also like giving myself kind of about a sand dollar size amount of that matte medium. And um, when I work my acrylic, I'm very minimal. I do add water to my, but folks have a tendency to like watercolor their acrylics and they don't know why the pigment is wiping off of the canvas. And that's just basically breaking down what's holding the pigment together. So I'm gonna go right into that. Um, like already, that's like the happy color. We can't see your surface. You can't see my surface? Uh-uh. Oh, she needs to switch the audio to the other camera so we can listen yeah. and watch that in the bigger screen. So you want me to switch this audio? To the other one, yeah. 
Okay, what's, what's happening? No, actually, what's what? just turn on the audio on that one and turn the audio off on this one. Actually, you can, okay, everyone can pin the video. Can you pin the video which where you are seeing the art? I, I think you are in the if you are in the speaker view because she's uh, maybe seeing her. Yeah. So you ha there is another one, so you can go and pin the other one so that you can see the canvas. We are able to. I'm I'm able to see the canvas. There are two cameras here. Uh, are you talking to me or no, not for you, Jay? I think for it's for others. You are fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where is the other camera? Yeah, you can go to the gallery view and look for it. I couldn't find it. Yeah, it's there. I miss it. Just the other camera. Yeah, I'll kind of hang out and stuff. Oh, yeah. You can look for Jaya. She, it's, it's one is Jaya's phone and another. Oh phone. yeah, found it. Yeah, so Jaya, you can continue so that. Uh, all right, so yeah, I've got two cameras going on. Excellent. So this will go. Is everyone able to see? Uh, no. Yeah, then it's, you'll have to pin the other ones. It's 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 Jaya. Maybe you maybe you may have to move. There are two because we have uh, thirty five members, so it, we are in two. It shows up in two pages. Actually, there I found it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. So I'll pin that one, right? Yeah, there it's, it's there in the recording also because I'm pinning that, so you'll be able to see, but. Don't miss to see this in life. So you, you can to... see my totally orange painting. Are you using any water at this point, or is it just some medium mixed in? Zero water. Okay. Total medium. Zippo, zippo, zippo water. So this right here is how I immediately just jump into a painting. I want to have a little bit of that. Um, energy of that color that's going to peek through the artwork. It's a beautiful sort of like a hint of that very very first um, underneath underneath the painting. I just used my number two brush, or I'm sorry, my number two brush. It's about two inches wide, and you can see how you don't waste any time getting the paint down. I love that stuff. So what I'm also adding to my palette, I'm squeezing out a little bit of titanium white. And from a material standpoint, I'm over squeezing my paint. This is not usually how much I squeeze out when I'm painting on my own. And I wouldn't recommend squeezing out like, you know, half of your paint tube, but I, I want the demonstration. I want you guys to really be able to see what I'm mixing. So when you're at home, you, you don't really need to squeeze out this much. I usually recommend about like a M and M size amount of paint, if that makes sense. P.S. Did you notice how there's like no sketch on my painting? Yes. What? What? Are you serious? Because in Sacramento, this is already dry. <laughs> <laughs> like ninety degrees here. Um, awesome. So for my um, for my subject matter, P.S. I don't have a clock on me. Um, I just want to make sure that I know. Okay, cool. We're doing oh, awesome. Yay. I'm always afraid that I'm like ahead of my schedules. So that's really good. So I want to give you guys I'd like a cool way to kind of put together um, a, a landscape that really exploits how many mixes you can get from these colors. So I want to give myself lovely, a nice little sky color here. And I'm not just grabbing blue, but I want to give it a little bit of warmth. So I snuck a touch of that Hansa yellow light in my, um, in my mix as well. So are you guys able to see that this has a little bit more of a marine quality? Yeah. As opposed to just the... Yeah. So there's that little difference of that yellow. So it really starts to make it a little bit more mature. When you paint straight from the tube, your paintings are going to look a little bit more, um, maybe like illustrative or loud in terms of intensity of color. Mm -hmm. So really understand mix it. It's going to start to tone those colors down and make them a little bit more, you know, like grown up, so to speak. 
not to not to knock painting with loud colors, but sometimes you just don't know why your painting looks like a cartoon. So this is kind of where I'm speaking to. So lovely, I have a beautiful sort of like an upper atmosphere color. I'm gonna sneak a touch of that titanium white in there. Notice how I kind of mix that a little bit off to the side. But here I you are doing that. I just want to tell everybody else that uh, for the oating, so I, I think I it's still not taking the, if you put B1, it won't take. Please do it as one uh, or the numbers uh, because it, it, it's not meant for taking the characters in it. So if you have just entered a, a text and uh, said, okay, it won't have come to me. So please just enter only the numbers for the artistic command. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Do you see how I just kind of made myself a lovely little gradient? Or have my darker to lighter? Yeah. Lovely. I'm going to take a touch more of that Hansi of the light in there. And I'm going to work my way up from my horizon line. What's awesome about these brushes is you can really get coverage, but you can also get some beautiful like pinstripe lines. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of just getting a little bit of that horizon line sky color down. This right here is going to be my horizon. And I'm going to and working this blue into that upper atmosphere. And I'm conscious of my brush strokes because I want to also start emulating um, like a cloud formation. So I'm not just painting, you know, um, vertically or horizontally, but notice how my brush strokes are starting to move in more of like a cradle shape. This is such a trip. I'm so excited that this is my first demo because I've been honestly like so scared to do a demo. Oh my head. I've been so I've been so scared to do a demo because I just like I like I don't know how to use this technology and I'm teaching myself and I don't want it to, you know, look unprofessional. I want you guys to be able to see it. Lovely. Whenever I grab that little bit of water, so when you see my brush move off screen, I'm grabbing just a little bit of water to slightly loosen up that paint. So that's something that's kind of happening um, just right up here above that screen. So whenever you see me reach over, I'm grabbing that water. Uh -huh, okay. That's what's happening there. So with my, kind of like my dynamic sky, I'm leaving a little bit of that um, original tone peeking through underneath, and that can start to read as, you know, almost like a, um, you know, under sunlit cloud, or just like some of that warmth in that sky, and it makes it a little bit more dynamic than just completely covering your with opaque acrylic paint. So I'm a huge fan of working you know, with glazes and being able to see those layers underneath. And so this is kind of fun where I've got some depth in my sky now. Awesome. I want to give myself just a little bit more of that pop against the horizon line. A little bit more buttery. Buttery sunlit blue. And you could call it mint, you could call it celadon. But that just kind of gave me a little bit of 
than like peeking at that horizon. There we go. I think the last time I did a demo, man, I don't even remember. Shoot, let alone San Jose. <laughs> So, so now I have, oh, go ahead. For the reference of that, you have it in your mind. I don't know whether you showed any reference picture to us. Oh, a reference? Yeah. Like, that's completely and totally in my imagination. Oh, yeah. That's no idea. <laughs> the sky. Okay. You mean that? <laughs> oh, man. Of course. I, I love it. Like, I have no idea what's going to happen next. So, um. What I want to have is I want to have a little bit of that, sort of like a, like that sunlight starting to come up from that horizon, and you can see how just by painting that sky, you know, in that light formation, I now have the idea of um, maybe some distant hills in the background. Oh, something I also, wanted, I also wanted to point out, or I also wanted to mention. Don't let me finish this demo without telling you about my very first online course that I'm going to launch next month. You have no idea how stressful <laughs> that is. So now that I have this on my brush, the way I'm going to progress through this painting is from this color. Like I'm not gonna paint the sky and then I'm gonna come down here in the foreground and then I'm gonna paint the background and then let me put in some more clouds. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use what's on my brush and move myself down my painting. So I have this really great sort of like a celadon on my brush right now. I'm gonna sneak a little bit more blue in there because if we're just talking about depth, whenever something is far away, it's gonna have a little bit more blue in it because that's just how our eyes register light. So lovely, what I'm doing is I'm sneaking in just a touch more of that blue. I'm gonna give myself the start of some distant hills in the background. And as my hills are going to start to progress forward, they're going to begin to get a little bit more saturated. So notice how I'm still um, uh, adding just a touch more of that blue. Let me sneak in a little bit more of that yellow. Lovely. And there's still white in this mix. How often have I rinsed my brush in this demonstration? None. None. Thank you. Thank you for engaging. What's your name? Denise. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll talk to you because you're on my <laughs> Awesome. So, um, I yes, have... I was always one of those front row students. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you. It, it, like, you know, it gives me a little bit of breathing room. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm just talking to myself. So here I have a little bit more of saturation, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that slightly more saturated hill forward, almost like in a very similar brush stroke to my sky. It kind of has like a scratchy, sketchy style brush stroke. I don't do the details now. You do the details after you have a little bit of body on your painting and then you start to turn up volume. Lovely. Let me get myself a little bit of saturation as I move forward. Notice how I'm also just kind of like zipping through this. Like I'm not concerned so much about like, oh shoot, am I going to add some trees? Am I going to, you know, put in a lake or anything like that? I'm not worried about that. So sometimes when you do a mix, you don't mix what you want. Notice how I grabbed a little bit too much of that. So I have to figure out how to balance it back out. So because I want this to be a little bit more of like a finished brown, when I'm looking at this red, to make this a little bit more neutralized, I'm gonna call on someone's color map. What's the opposite of red? Green. Green. Thank you. Who said that? Good job, gold star. <laughs> when you have a color that has too much of a sway or too much of a bias, 
you want to neutralize that color, you add its opposite. And that's essentially the, you know, teeter-totter balancing act of color mixing. So notice how I added green into that red, and I have much more of a neutral color. Very cool. Awesome. I need to mention this, Jaya. Uh, this is your fourth to fifth demo in park. Is it? Yes. <laughs> I don't even. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> you see, you have started with the wood painting demo. Oh my gosh! I that was like so forever ago. I, <laughs> uh, uh, Jay, I wanted to tell you something. I remember you from when you were a student in San Jose and working in U University Art San Jose. Oh my gosh! Remember, I, was, I think you were working in uh, University Art, right? I was working in University Art in San yes. Jose. I remember you so well because you were. So so helpful when I came there for my interdesigning courses and I'm looking for material and you were explaining it so well that which one will work and which will not work. Oh my so God. I remember you so well from that day. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, you're gonna like make me cry. Oh, this is so cool that this is like my first super scary virtual demo. Oh my gosh, and I'm doing it with you guys, very cool. Aw, oh, thanks for remembering me. Yeah, I was a big fan of yours uh, since uh, your since I saw your uh, wood art. Oh my gosh, that was like such like a blast from the past. It was uh, two thousand, I guess, uh, uh, twelve or thirteen. Jeez, it's been. Oh my god, it must have been like ten years old back then. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so essentially what I've got, I've got like a, an underpainting down and I have this kind of like a weight of chromatic neutral in my foreground. I'm going to have to sort of tie it all together, maybe tame that down a little bit, but color wise, I've essentially just worked with these four, I've worked with these four colors and manipulated them from the beginning with this sky color. So I was able to kind of get this, um, uh, uh, sky finish and carry that down and uh, translate it into my landscape. And so now that I have this kind of funky color on my brush, I can either work my way back up, but honestly, that's not how, like, my, that's not my MO. I like to go back to the horizon line and either work my way back up into the sky or work my way back down into the landscape. So this color that's on my brush, I'm going to get rid of some of that. I want you to see that When I squeegee that color off of my brush, I'm not rinsing my brush back out to like square one. There's still some residue in here, um, but part of working with that limited color palette is that you can't get out of color harmony. And so what's on my brush right now, I'm just gonna kind of use that as part of, you know, what's going to appear in my mix. So I'm gonna go back up to my horizon. I'm gonna start to refine my hills a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to that beautiful little sky color. I think I have some active paint right on here. Let me just kind of squeegee that up a little bit. As a reminder, that was the, the blue, the yellow, and a little bit of the white. There we go. And I want that horizon to again, you know, be that like lightest, bluest, most distant hill. If you have your distant hill as like the same as the saturation what's in your foreground, you're not going to have a sense of depth in your landscape. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jaya, it does. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'll entertain myself. This is the very energy that uh, attracts us to come to you always for the demo. Please keep having me back so I can get better at this. Because already, <laughs> yeah, like you can see on my rig and that, like, well, I don't have extremely good lighting in here because I'm afraid I, I'm going to blow a fuse. But I don't want to do that because then the Wi-Fi goes and then it, it just all gets bad and I'll have like a panic attack. 
So for now, I'm just like going to be okay with this lighting and I'm just going to look like I'm, you know, overexposed, but that's okay. Yep. So what I did, I went back to that distant hill color. I'm adding a little bit of matte medium to that because now what I've got on my brush is going to be um, ever slightly transparent. So this is now a semi-transparent or a semi-opaque glaze. It's not fully opaque, but there's gonna be a little bit of see-through quality to that. And this is where you can start to get some beautiful, soft, my head, subtle highlights or, or shadows or You know, basically a delicacy in your painting. I'm sneaking just a little bit more titanium white and can't see yellow light in there. And I can give myself a little bit of highlight on. Since it's acrylic and since you're working in a hot, dry in, environment, uh, don't you do you ever have a problem with the paint drying in your brush and glomming it up when you're not done yet? Um, that's something that I don't worry too much about because um, I'm able to kind of work within that very quick dry time and I can get back to a mix. Mm. Um, and that comes with obviously practice mm -hmm. doing it for a very long time and um, being able to read color. Mm -hmm. And that's something that when you continue, when, when you just put the time in behind the brush, it pays off. Mm -hmm. And acrylic, I absolutely love acrylic because it dries fast and I absolutely hate acrylic because it dries fast. <laughs> um, but with acrylic, there is a force where you need to get the color down. So it's sort of, you're sort of confronted with commitment issues when you paint with acrylic. Um, don't get me started on watercolor. I, you know, I give you guys props for doing watercolor because you have to have like a, some sort of serious like, you know, stomach for that. But, um, <laughs> but, but with acrylic, you know, you got to get it down. There's no dinking around with it. And um, let's see here. Okay, cool. Now I'm at my weird color. Awesome. Um, yeah, there's no, you know, messing around with acrylic. You want to get the color down. With oil, you know, you can blend and then you can go have some lunch and then you can go to the post office. Well, not really right now, but, um, you know, then you can you know, come back to it in two weeks and pick up where you left off. This color makes me really sad. And have you guys ever run into mud? Oh, yeah. No one in has, right? Like no mm -hmm. one knows what. Um, you can make mud what, in any medium. No one, no one knows. <laughs> but you guys want to hear like my number one best advice that I can give you for mud? Put the brush down. Just put the brush in your water, put the brush in your turpentine, whatever medium you're using. When you mix mud, the panic painting is that you feel that you have to use it. And that's when things start to go. So this color right here, the reason why I'm not a fan of it is because it's really, really desaturated because there's too much white in here and there's this yucky tint thing happening. And I want this to look a little bit more like an earthy brown. So if you mix something that is like, you know, going to derail you, rinse the brush and reset yourself. I can't, you know, stress that enough because you don't want to be fixing your artwork. If anything, just take that extra time, reevaluate your color mix and then move forward. But um, that there's like this weird, what's there, there's this weird, like, duty that you have to use that color and that's where then your painting like starts to cry and it's really sad you guys can see this mix right so i'm starting now with the green you want to be more in like an earthy color i'm going to add that opposite i'm going to add that red lovely oh that makes me so so much more so much more mellow white 
too much white in this mix and I wasn't happy about that. I'm gonna sneak it a little bit closer to so I'm getting a little bit more of that. Denise, ha Denise Howard, did I see you in Los Gatos' meeting yesterday? Nope. That wasn't you? Okay. Nope. Jaya, do you use uh, extenders or uh, gels in your acrylics? No, no. Unless I'm doing something that, like, I want it to look like it's um, very textured, then I'll start to use, like, a... Um, like an extra heavy body paste. But um, for my general like class work, no, it's just like matte medium all the way. Now that I have the color I want, now I can add that white to taste to kind of sort of meet this, this funky little hill in the middle. So this color that's on my brush, I'm gonna start a new little, new little pile over here. I'm going to inch in a little bit of that titanium white. I'm going to desaturate it just a touch. And so now this is sort of bridging the gap. Yeah, this is like giving me much more like of a, this makes, you see that difference? Now I feel like so much more peaceful when I look at that hill. It was giving me hill anxiety. <laughs> there it is. this okay. is a small painting. If you do a bigger one, do you make more paint at a time or you keep it? Yes. Heck, 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 yes. Um, everything scales up when you go bigger. Um, your brushes scale up. You might even grab a palette that has really big wells. Like, um, sometimes I'll save the, uh, what is it? Like, you know, I, I don't know if they're Bosch pairs, but there's this set of pears that comes in a plastic container and it's like a really big like four cult four set plastic container right. i'll use that as a palette so that you can mix like large quantity um but when you're working on something like this you know this is this is about like i want to say um what is this this is 12 by this is 12 by 16 but i don't know if you guys can see that back there, that's 36 by 72. And so I was using like big brushes, I was using squeegees, and like my color mix was like the size of the palette. And I would grab it with that squeegee and squeegee it on the brush. If you guys want to have me back to do a big dynamic abstract painting using squeegees, I would be happy to do that. Mm -hmm. So now that I've kind of got this like much more like mellow green happening, I'm able to do like a nice little layer on my landscape. I'm trying to like see the light on here. I'm kind of looking at the crest of my hills. Oh my god. The light is like reflecting right in my eyes. I can barely like see what's happening. You guys have definitely a much better view than I do. It's reflecting in my face. Yeah, we are able to see it well. I'm so glad because at this point I'm kind of guessing at what's happening right down here because I'm getting like a glare. All right, there we go. So this matte medium is giving me the ability to do those semi-opaque glazes. And I can see sort of like, almost like that red earth color um, coming through underneath. And um, I still feel that there's that, like a disconnect from this hill into these. And so this guy is sort of like my little struggle point. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of change things up a little bit. Right. I, I demo until about 8.45, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to make sure. Okay. Lovely. I'm just going to kind of, I'm just refreshing my brush off screen. Just getting some of that color out. Lovely. I'm going to start back up here at that, um, uh, at that skyline, and I'm going to start bringing some of that lightness up into the sky because this is very, very similar right now. 
to squeeze up just a little bit more of that matte medium. Love that stuff. So it makes me happy. And when I mix, I rarely use a palette knife. You'll notice that I'm using my brush a lot. Rarely will I use a palette knife. However, when I'm working really big, yes, I will start to use a palette knife because there's a lot more scooping happening. And um, when you're learning color, using a palette knife is, I would say, it's a way that you can save your brushes. Because if you're, you know, kind of guessing while you're mixing, um, you know, your brush is gonna get really funky very quickly. So now I have my skyline color. Yay. Oh. And P.S. I've really just used my one inch wide brush for this entire painting. I haven't gone down to a smaller size yet because I'm still, I feel like I'm still giving myself, you know, that foundation. This new pile has a little bit more of that uh, matte medium in there, so I'll have that semi-opaque. There you are. That semi-opaque color. And I can even start to change up my skyline. Do you see how I kind of drop those hills down a little bit? Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit more conscious of my brush strokes in this next layer because this is really where it's starting to look or it's going to start to be a little bit more refined. But because I have, you know, that first layer down, you know, I don't feel like it's so precious. Like now I'm able to kind of go in and give myself a little bit more delicacy, a little bit more detail. You see how my sky is starting to look a little bit more alive? Hopefully it is. Yes. I think it is. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, the brush strokes are so unique. I don't, I, I think only you can do this, I feel. <laughs> so they just move it so easily with the colors. It's nice to watch you doing this. Oh, yay! So um, it was kind of a trip. I was so I, like I said, I've been making this um, this online course, and it's self-paced. It's a color mixing course, and I demonstrate it with acrylic. This has been like my serious like opus. Oh my gosh, don't even. Um, and so I do uh, demonstrations in the course kind of similar to this. And it's all about really just uh, mixing color, making the color you want, making those swatches, making those color swatches. So I'm so excited that it's like starting to come to fruition. Lovely. Just gonna give myself that pop at the horizon. Really give myself that glow. There it is. A little something something. Lovely. Let me carry this down um, into my into my landscape. And now that I'm kind of in my second or third layer, I do want to start uh, getting a little bit more detail. So this is a term that I call graduating to a smaller brush. So now that I'm starting to add more detail, I want to have a little bit of a smaller brush to give that level of detail that I want. So this is essentially my sky color that I just put in here. I'm going to find the crest of some of these hills. Start to bring out some of those highlights. Find the slopes of the hills. And my brush strokes are very light. I don't have a lot of pressure on my brush. If you apply pressure, 
you're going to splay those bristles and you're going to get that wider line. But if you give yourself a light pressure and you're able to kind of keep that blade of the brush, you can get a really nice fine line. I'm starting to get into some of my more earthy neutrals. I'm gonna tweak it with a little bit of blue because I'm still in those distant hills. I don't want it to be too saturated yet. Jared, this paper is... Um... This is called Canvas Set. Okay. Canvas Set. Mm -hmm. It is a, sort of like a mock canvas. Mm -hmm. It has sort of like a plasticky feel. It's not true canvas. Um, and I actually prefer working with this because it does have that slightly slicker surface. So I find that the brush strokes are a little bit smoother. Whereas pads of like true canvas, like where it's actually um, like a gessoed fabric, it's much, much rougher. And you're gonna find that you're gonna need to put much more product, like paint. Right. on the true canvas. And so with this, I just really like that there is a slight smoothness to it, and I just prefer that. Yeah, like oh. a very little tooth uh, rather than... Yeah. yeah, there is sort of like a little, kind of like a little, you know, pretend, you know, canvas texture on it. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, I, I like it. Whoops. So I want, I want you guys to be aware of something. I accidentally made a couple of little drips of water here. And so something that happens if you accidentally drip. Oh. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh. All right, just paint over it. We're working in layers. So this funky little hill is at least starting to have just a touch more form. And I was able to kind of work, work through that sort of like that bizarre color that it was that it was originally. And part of what really gives these hills a little bit more shape is the direction of the brush stroke. Lovely. Now that I'm at my bigger hill, I'm gonna jump back to my big brush. Because if I was trying to do, you know, detail work on that big hill, it would take me forever and a day with that little half inch wide brush. Some of the rookie mistakes that I'll see is that people will be afraid to use big brushes, um, but actually it's much more efficient. So learning how to do as much as possible with a bigger brush is going to help you grow as an artist as opposed to using the smallest, itty bittiest, microscopic one hair brushes because I know some of you have them. I know that they're like, hideous, hideous ones. Um, but being able to work with bigger brushes, you get bolder with your brush strokes and you start to get a little bit more expressive. And um, in my opinion, that's something that can kind of like help accelerate you to wherever you want to go. Oh, let's see here, I'm gonna get this little guy. I just want to give myself a little bit of a highlight on this foreground hill. So are uh, your favorite subjects landscapes? I love landscapes. And I would say that like, you know, it, the only thing that like rivals that are abstracts. I love abstracts and, um, so yeah, landscapes, abstracts, and when I, well, when I was teaching, when I had a classroom, um, skyscapes, absolutely love those. All right. So I don't know if you can see some of the original layers peeking through underneath. And remember how I had kind of like that so like that muddy purple like plum color and how that is now kind of giving a little bit of weight to that um, a little bit more uh, 
you know, uh, earthy green by painting in layers. Now it starts to have like a little bit more of like a fleshy quality to it. Not fleshy like weird, but it's starting to look like it has a bit more dimension. So if you just start painting like, you know, opaque cover on top of cover on top of cover, um, your painting can look very flat. And so by working in layers, it can get a little bit more of a, um, a little bit more depth and it can appear a little bit more luminous. So we're at, where are we? 829? Awesome. So of course, like I can't do a demo without like totally freaking you out. So I'm going to do something a little bit different right now, right? Because I can't just like leave this, right? I have to do something else. So what I've got, I've got that green that I kind of ended up with. I'm sneaking a lot of that Hansa yellow light in here. Oh my gosh, so much Hansa yellow light. What the heck? Oh my gosh. I'm, in, I'm inching in a little bit more of that um, quinacridone magenta. And so now I have this kind of like this acidic brown action happening. You guys want to see something kind of cool? Yeah, Jaya, we do. We totally want to see something cool. <laughs> I'll be excited. <laughs> so notice how I just made kind of like this dried grass color. Uh, like wheat. Like wheat. I made this dried grass color. Oh my god. Lovely. And let's find some on the palette paper. Let's just try it right here. Excellent. Yeah. There you are. I'm thinking of my distant hills. So I'm scaling down to a smaller brush and I've got sort of like that glaze of that dried grass color. I want to make sure I see what I'm doing so I don't mess up. Oh my god! Yeah, it's not mess up. It's coming alive. Oh, thank God. It's like after I don't know how many months before, like from teaching or doing a demo, I'm like trying to remember that I know what the heck I'm talking about. I'm like, just trust the process. So I'm layering this quite dried color over that, you know, bluish hill. Mm. And you see how it's starting to look like a little bit more sun-kissed now? Like there's a little bit more light kind of like peaking on those hills. A little bit more for you guys. Yeah. That lovely. So by grabbing the color, and I'm kind of like grabbing a little bit of matte medium as I go, and working this this transparency, light transparency. It's like it doesn't have to be so perfect because I'm still showing some of that color underneath. Okay, okay, here I am. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that saturated color. So exciting. My brush stroke will kind of like find the curvature of the hills. You see how they're kind of sloping down with the hills? Now I have this little valley down here.
find that slope downward. Here I am at my foreground hill. I'm gonna go to my slightly larger brush because it's a big hill. And I've got a strong amount of that color on my breast. There's still matte. So this is going to be like a full blast opaque. I told you that I'm gonna kind of like freak you out, right? Because I'm starting to be a little nervous. Finding the crest still. And how it slopes down. Finding that crest. Wow, this is so nice. Allowing airs to kind of still come through. <laughs> under Oh, we have to pay. Wow. Grabbing that mat. Wow. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm now adding just a little bit more titanium that. Um, color that I just used. I'm starting to increase that tint. Finding that crack. I'm going to show this color from Boss. Really get a lot on my brush. I know it's still active palette. I'm going to up. Give myself just a little pork on tail right here. Say hey there, Corbin. No, what's up? Get you in there. Make up this little dude in the foreground. We get a little bit of detail. Kind of follow the edge of that hill. There's a little bit of grass. Or dry grass. How are we doing? Oh, we're doing good. I'm going to finish the puppy. I want that grass to be consistent throughout that hill. It doesn't look like there's, like, you know, hair. It's like someone just kind of like standing in the hill. And the attention to detail is going to really make this appear like it's, you know, in front. I'm going to give myself kind of like my value. Color. Really bring that grass in front. And what I'm doing is I'm laying that high value, like wheat color, over that. It's it's still I would say a higher you know a high value, but by 
layering, I now have a little bit more depth in my grass as opposed to just having like, you know, single strokes of like, you know, like you're looking at like a wiry dog hair grass. So this has a little bit more, I mean, unless that's what you're going for, because some people want to have wiry dog hair grass. So I'm really taking my time. Getting. getting that level of detail really in the foreground. And so now I have that essence of depth as it's, um, oh, whoops, low battery, not a perfect timing. <laughs> um, that essence of depth as it, you know, moves backward. So I hope that this demonstration has kind of showcased what you can create with a limited color palette of four colors. And these four colors were like super technicolor colors. I mean, quinacridone magenta is like, you know, I mean, it's practically like a circus on a palette. And being able to balance that by understanding how to work with um, the opposite, the, the chromatic, the complements, um, you're able to really get more nuanced colors. So this, this is like, you know, what I am so passionate about. And honestly, like having, having the opportunity to kind of share, you know, what I absolutely love. Is, You know, that just makes, really made my, made my month. Lovely. So I think that you guys can kind of see that, you know, color mixing is like one of my favorite, favorite subject matters. And I'll be making some official announcements of when my color mix masterclass course is going to be available because it's coming up soon. And I tell you, like, building an online course, like, let alone an online school, has been definitely a learning process. Like, this boom, I had to learn how to use this thing. <laughs> this wire, I had to learn where to plug that thing in. <laughs> this has two lenses. <laughs> so, like, learning how to do all of the technical back end has, oh, my gosh, that's been my learning curve. What kind of camera are you using? Pardon? What kind of camera are you using? This, this camera is uh -huh. a Sony Alpha A6400. And it has, right now this has a Sony lens, but I also have a wide angle lens for when I do, um, like, like just, just me. Wide angle would blow this up. But, um, yeah, I got to learn all about that kind of stuff. Um. Jaya, if you don't mind, could you could you send us a photo of the setup? I would love to. Yeah, if I knew how to walk around my studio with my phone without tripping over wires, I would go it to you. <laughs> yeah, if you could send us later on, that's fine too. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll send that to you. And I hope you guys don't mind, but I would love um to forward the information about my new online course to uh, Shuba and Junkie and sh they can share it with you guys because this is like, honestly, it is my opus. It is over four hours of instruction about color mixing. There's 10 chapters with about 65 lessons. 100%. Like, yeah, it's, it's insanely in depth. Like it's the color nerd course. It's just like, <laughs> You know, like this and that, this isn't the course for you. But if you want to talk about pigment classifications and light wavelengths, I've got your back. But anyway, and there's like exercises and projects and, um, and they're not as in-depth as this, but it just kind of can take color mixing and put it back So I'm going to send the information about my new Jaya's Art School to... Uh, Shuba and Jonk. It's like I can't stop painting. <laughs> are we, are we, I'm going to keep going. Um, but it has been, you know, five months in the works. 
and um, you know, it's ready to go out into the world. So I'm excited to talk about it. Did you do the recordings and everything yourself or did you hire somebody? I was the director, the videographer, the audio, <laughs> the subtitler, uh, the writer. Uh -huh. Did I say director? <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, so I'm going to get all the Grammys. <laughs> he grip, dolly like, grip. <laughs> I will best, my own best boy. <laughs> ceremony. Jared, do you mind uh, repeating the colors, please? Yeah, sure. So I used, um, ultramarine blue, mm -hmm. quinacridone magenta. Let me see if I can really show this to you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quinacridone magenta, Hansa yellow light, and titanium white. Okay. So these colors give you this vast array of opportunity. And this is just, you know, like an hour demo. Um, but you can achieve, I you guys. There we go. This will be fun. Wow. So this is using the exact same color palette. Wow. This is the exact same palette. You notice how you can kind of see some of that original toned background peeking through as that almost like that like highlighter pink. Mm -hmm. And so that is the um the two color combination that I started with. And this guy, I actually started with a lavender background. So um, you can get very subtle earthy colors and just because, you know, I'm a fan of abstracts, this little mm -hmm. semi-abstracted landscape, you could see that you can also really go technicolor with this color palette. And if you have just, you know, your basic red, yellow, and blue, not like primary red, primary yellow, and primary blue, don't get me started on middle of the road primaries, but you can have, you know, a more traditional color palette like alizarin crimson, um, yellow ochre, and Prussian blue. And you can see what you can create with those. Um, you can get, a whole nother range of, you know, beautiful earth tones or, you know, those luminous, uh, more expressive colors. Um, my, like the palette that I use in all of my classes is the, or, you know, like, you know, like 90% of my classes is the one that I demonstrated with tonight. And part of the reason why it becomes seamless is because you just keep doing it. You keep uh, you know, uh, experimenting with mixes, you tweak it a little bit. Um, and so you don't have to think about what you're doing on your palette. It becomes much more natural and, you know, start to be able to paint with much more ease and enjoyment. And that's what it's about us. You want to do like that pained artist thing, but who wants to do that? <laughs> Does anyone have any questions about what the canvas or the paper called again? Sure. Let's see. It's called Canvas Set and um, I use Bean Fang brand. Um, I think that yeah, Bean Fang is great inexpensive way to practice painting if you work with acrylics or oils this wouldn't be conducive for watercolor um, or you know pastel because of the type of paper it is but for acrylics or oils I absolutely love this stuff um, it comes in comes in a pad 
and you can use both sides. If you grab just the regular canvas pad, um, it's really only usable on just one side. I mean, unless you're doing something totally experimentational on the other side. Um, but yeah, I like this stuff. Okay. And oh, good. Yes. Yeah. I think yeah, now uh, yes, yeah, ten minutes to nine. So we'll we can if you have any questions, we can you can I, I, is there any way we others can reach out to you, Jaya? Uh, do you do you frame that under class or without class? That is an awesome question. What I would do is if you wanted to frame this out glass because this is just a piece of you know canvas set paper, mm -hmm. um, you could have it mounted on a piece of foam core and then you know exposed uh, in a frame without glass. Um, if you don't want to mount it, then I would recommend a mat around it and then putting that under glass. You basically just don't want glass to come in contact with the acrylic because otherwise it's going to stick to it. Um, so I would just mount it on foam core. And like this, this guy is um, mounted on foam core. And, you know, you can just put this guy in a frame. So, did, you do, did you do the mounting to foam core before or after you painted on the surface? After. Okay. After. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, do you varnish for you putting onto anything else? You know, I don't. The only time I varnish my acrylics is if it's a. a when I show, I usually don't show acrylics. Uh, I also work in a medium called encaustic. It's uh, painted with hot wax, and so that's more of my gallery work. But my acrylics is from a micro medium. Um, however, if someone commissions me to do something, then I would do a varnish just so that it's you know protected for them. Uh, my favorite varnish that I use is by Bolden, and I like to use their. I think they have a satin varnish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, and I, I, that way it's like not too shiny, um, uh, not too matte, just kind of in between. And um, that way you kind of have like a nice even sheen over everything because not all colors will dry to exactly the same sheen because it has to do with the pigment. And so I like to use Golden's satin varnish whenever I do a commission. Okay. Any other questions? One last question before we close. I know I think they're very interesting questions. They are very interesting. Oh wait, hold on. Someone drive by up the Harley Davidson. I didn't hear it. <laughs> so, welcome to my studio. Oh my gosh, it'll be better next time, you guys. <laughs> no, this was awesome. I think we did it very well. Yeah. Want to clap for you? Oh, thank you. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, any last questions? Because I want to make sure all your questions are answered. So if you're, are you done with questions then? Okay, with that, say, so thank you very much, Jaya. Awesome painting, like learned a lot of things. I think I, all of us, it was our first demo. It's like a last thing we had from Behnaz, but this is the first demo from uh, artists from the Bay Area. So it went very well. So thank you, thank you, Jaya. And I will share the recording. Uh, I was not on the live, so some uh, uh, for some of the clips here, but I'll share the entire recording to the group uh, later. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh man, how do I click? Thank leave? you. How does this work? Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, now, now we are, we'll announce the artist of the month an, uh, announcements here. So I got the voting. So we. I, I I I missed out to show Vishaka's work. Maybe Vishaka, you do you, you want to show your work to everyone? Vishaka, because I think I missed out to call you out, or you were not there. Yes, I'm holding it up. Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.